when the Earth undergoes these climactic changes, they can be devastating to, to the, uh, not just to the environment, but to those living in the environment, both plants and animals. Although life is very resilient and life, uh, as Dr. Malcolm once said, finds a way, it also is fragile. Digging for fossils in the badlands of Wyoming. This story is an attempt to put words to an experience that leaves one speechless. Recently, a group of amazing people from our HMNS adult education program traveled to Hewlett, Wyoming to dig for dinosaur fossils, which is an astonishing sentence in and of itself. Regular folks being given the opportunity to play an active down in the dirt role to progress the field of paleontology. Amazing. You can actually learn more about joining the HMNS adult education program by visiting hmns.org. This was a once-in-a-lifetime experience graciously hosted by our friends at the Black Hills Institute in Hill City, South Dakota. Leading the team was none other than the president of the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research and world-renowned paleontologist, Peter Larson. Peter helped discover and excavate Sioux in 1990, the most complete T-Rex ever unearthed. Sioux's dimensions were used to create the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. This joyful, kind-hearted legend was down in the dirt with us, helping guide our digging tools. Unreal. They say don't meet your heroes. Well, Peter is the exception. Meeting this hero will only make you love him and dinosaurs more. A few notables from HMNS were, of course, David Temple, Chuck Lay, James Washington, and two interns, Tom from Jolly Old England and Aiden from California. We'll hear more from these characters and others as we go along. So that takes care of the cast, but what about the location? Set in the shadow of Devil's Tower in the Black Hills of Northeast Wyoming, the Wa Quarry dig site resides just outside of the picturesque small town of Hewlett. The site is only accessible on foot or by off-road vehicle, but even then, weather permitting. This environment is as rugged as it is breathtaking. Luckily for us, weather was only a minor issue causing only minor setbacks. 
So the surroundings alone are a privilege. The Black Hills region of the United States easily ranks as one of the most spellbindingly beautiful places in the world. The smell of the pines and the dirt is carried in the breeze. The unlimited view of achingly beautiful landscape and sky. The almost deafening roar of immense and expansive silence combines with the overwhelming visual scale to shake your very soul at its existential foundation. This almost out-of-body experience is only brought into cathartic focus when your nose is inches from the dirt, searching for often tiny pieces of earth-shattering giants. This is one of the only places in the world where you can experience the scales of macro and micro at their most polar and euphoric extremes. To be here and to be doing this is to often find zen-like peace among contrasting radicals. The team here, reaching across the incomprehensibly immense ocean of time to reveal in sharp clarity the last fleeting moments of these creatures' lives. Finding the tooth of an Allosaurus near the bite-scarred bones of Barosaurus bridges the gap of unfathomable millennia as if these beasts were here only moments ago. The undertaking here in the Wa Quarry itself spans decades. It remains one of the most prolific dig sites in the world, as Peter explains. So we began digging in the Wa Quarry, I, I believe around 2001, and we found bones coming out of the ground. And actually, in that first trip up, we collected a brain case from a theropod, an unidentified as of yet theropod. This is the second time we've had uh, HMNS up at our quarry, and they're delightful people. They're able to learn and, and, and want to learn. So we want to make sure that everybody gets that, that pleasure of working on a, on, on a real dinosaur bone that's 145 million years old. Sometimes you can go days and days digging nothing but dirt, so to speak. It's just one of the realities of, of, of the profession. So here we're digging in an area where there's a horizon that's about 18 inches thick, sometimes as much as three feet thick, that has dinosaur bones in it. So the skeletons here are what we call associated skeletons. There's some articulation, and, 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 and if you have a complete articulated skeleton, it would be the bones are in position just as they were if they were still covered with flesh. But mostly what we have is like this pile of bones over here where we have, we have a, a pelvic bone, there was a, a leg bone over there, then there's vertebra from the sacrum, and then vertebra from the tail, and vertebra from the body, right in a big pile. And as we're following it out, we're finding more vertebra from the neck and more vertebra from the tail. I call it an associated skeleton because every bone in that pile is from the same kind of dinosaur, they're the right size. And because it's in a pile, uh, that's a very, very good indication that, that all those bones belong to one individual. This is basically the cutoff meander or an oxbow lake that uh, I think these dinosaurs visited when they were uh, alive. A good scenario would be that there was perhaps a drought and these animals were at this water hole hoping for rain <laughs> and uh, the water hole was dry and they, they died here. During that time they were fed upon by carnivores who were able to get not only sustenance but liquids from these, these animals as well, at least a little bit to survive and move on. So maybe then the rainy season, we had this flood event. So maybe it rained here, maybe it didn't rain here, but the, at the head of the headwaters of the river, it rained a lot. And it brought down this big mass of water that it was moving forward, picked up chunks out of the, out of the Oxbow Lake and chunks off of the floodplain above it and mixed it all together and covered up these dinosaurs. The Wa Quarry has a lot of significance, both historically because some of the first dinosaur bones dug in, in North America were dug in the Morrison Formation. Not here, but a little bit further west in Wyoming. And over the years, there's been many quarries opened up in the Morrison Formation, which runs all the way uh, into uh, to Montana to the north, to Utah to the west, and uh, New Mexico to the south, and Oklahoma to the east even of us. We do know that these guys traveled around quite a bit because we find actually little gastroliths which are stomach stones that obviously they didn't pick up here because there was nothing like that exposed 
because the Black Hills Uplift hadn't happened yet. Dinosaurs, believe it or not, were the first rock collectors. <laughs> so we're finding new species, we're finding a lot more about the environment and how uh, the environment changes. You know, right now we're, our planet is undergoing some drastic changes. We, we refer to it as climate change or global warming. And uh, we can see from instances like this what happens when the Earth undergoes these climactic changes. And, and it can be devastating to, to the, uh, not just to the environment, but to those living in the environment, both plants and animals. And so, although life is very resilient and life, uh, as Dr. Malcolm once said, finds a way, um, it, it, it also is, is fragile. So if you're interested in, in finding fossils, the first thing you need to do is read. You know, getting some good books on geology, good books on paleontology, and uh, there are a few guidebooks that actually explain a little bit on how to collect fossils and stuff. So reading's the, the place to start. There are places that uh, you can go that allow people to collect fossils. Other places where you can work with a museum, like the Houston Museum, to go on digs. Through the Bureau of Land Management, you might be able to find, a, uh, they could give you some information, or the Forest Service, on, on places that you're allowed to collect. There are fossil clubs and, and gem and mineral clubs. So it's, it's about studying and, and, and going on the internet and search, making searches and uh, you know, you can find places where you can collect fossils. Now, when it comes to digging for fossils, it is often asked, why knives and brushes? Why not typical digging tools? Well, the short answer is feel, delicacy, and finesse. Fossils can be extraordinarily fragile. They have spent tens to hundreds of millions of years at the Earth's geological mercy. So, while dinosaur bones are mineralized like rock or petrified wood, the last thing you want is to damage them further. Preservation is key. Small fine tools help locate and feel the fossil in the ground, while it's the brushes that actually do the most dirt matrix removal. Bigger tools like shovels, hoes, and diesel-powered machinery are typically only used to clear away what the knives and brushes have discarded. And you'd be surprised at how much needs to be cleared after a few hours of digging with just knives and brushes. As specimens are found, the smell of superglue often wafts past your nose downwind. Superglue helps preserve and protect the fossils from further exposure and corrosion after seeing daylight for the first time in millions of years. Even if every tiny scoop of dirt doesn't reveal a complete, articulated skeleton, there is still excitement with every clump removed and brushed away. What will the next stroke reveal? It's the thrill of the unknown and the promise of what you very well might find next. For some first-hand layman in sight of the dig, let's talk to Tom and Aiden. I'm here for the experience, but it's a good experience so far. I walked up here. It's actually a really beautiful walk. We've had like a load of success, but everywhere where I'm digging, we've ended up with, I've ended up with nothing. But I, I still have passion. I still believe I can find something. Got one of these. Was very excited to get a knife. First day was nice, sat down, clothes were clean. They aren't clean anymore, but... Literally everywhere I've turned, I've wanted to take a picture. And I don't take that many pictures usually, but... Literally everything I've looked at has been picturesque. Like, even the bobcat right there just parked up, looks beautiful. I've, I've gotten to know Wyoming really well over the past, like, two months, but my expectations were... I knew it would be hot. Today, actually, I think we found a gastrolith, a pretty nice-sized gastrolith. If I can find literally anything, I'd be happy. A I feel like everyone kind of wants to find a tooth or the skull, but I'm being realistic here and just anything complete that isn't gonna fall apart on me would probably make my, make my trip 10 times better, even though it's already brilliant. My dream find in this quarry, I'd love to find a copper white, which is just a piece of poop. It's a fossilized piece of poop. The tooth that was found over there, um, I don't remember who found it, but I think it was an Allosaurus or something like that that they found, so that's quite cool. But seeing like the serrations still intact and it hasn't been smoothed out, it, it's, it's really cool. I kind of wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to lick it so I could be the first to, to, <laughs> to lick it. I'm having fun. I'm having a good time. I might not be finding as much as there are, but I'm still having a good time. Just sticking the knife into the ground, lifting up rocks. Yeah, 
that everyone here is lovely and that makes the trip 10 times better because you could just be sat there digging with kind of nothing in your head not speaking to anyone it'd still be brilliant but the people here have been like really nice I mean I don't feel out of place even with my accent so I don't feel out of place at all it's been, it's been brilliant the whole time through I, don't, I mean every time I go to bed I'm already looking forward to the next day and on the first day I already didn't want it to end but now we're kind of coming to the end and it's like it's sad you know this has shaped my experience in a positive way so far, so only positive things I can say, except maybe about Dave. Oh, David's hilarious. I, I, he could not tell a joke and I'd still laugh. Like, he's just one of the funniest people I've met and kind of gross as well. <laughs> Make no bones about it. While the digging itself is a rewarding adventure, conversations do help pass the time between finds. And excitement always ensues at pivotal moments, like new discoveries, evolving theory as more of a bone is revealed, and of course, the actual extraction itself. Once enough of the fossil is exposed for extraction, if it is big enough, small tunnels are dug through the matrix in strategic load balanced locations. Support beams will be passed through these tunnels to equally support the weight of the specimen when it's time to cut the rest of the matrix away and actually lift the specimen from its millennia of slumber. Prior to the actual lift, the fossils are protectively encased in tinfoil, then in plaster. It goes without saying that being a part of this process and part of the actual act of furthering of scientific research isn't just wonderful, it is a humbling privilege. To expand on this experience, our own HMNS curator of paleontology, David Temple, gives us more perspective. Local museum here, it's always good when they have digs um, in the area that the, you know, they allow some of the stuff to remain in the local area so the, the citizens here can see it and also tourists coming through can see it. So they have a spectacular original Brachiosaur femur that's in the local museum and we went there yesterday briefly and looked at that. We have a bunch of people up from Houston, uh, including my two summer interns, and I, I love doing this kind of thing because it's field science, it's actually you're doing process and, uh, of course, you get to see how people hold up and how they react to being in nature and then having to do work in nature, uh, digging up dinosaurs. And so the things, the discoveries that people make are original. This is not something that has been excavated previously and buried in a sand pit for somebody to find. Uh, this is, you know, actual discoveries. And so I think that's part of the appeal of this sort of tourism uh, even though, you know, science with the general public, sometimes they don't seem as interested, but uh, this is a way for them to participate in science on the cutting edge. And of course, it's real. That's the thing I love about it. It's real. So the heat is real. The privations are real. The porta potty is real, which is, this is unique for some digs because at least you got a porta potty. You know, we're a tight knit group um, and that's working with your, uh, your fellow diggers because you have to function as a team. It's absolutely part of the experience. So that's what we're doing. Hewlett, Wyoming, and we're in the Morrison Formation. And the Morrison Formation is huge, covers about 600,000 square miles. And uh, the hill behind me is full of bones. So there's no um, threat that, you know, this is gonna peter out anytime soon. So there's probably a lot of stuff here. You know, you can walk into our hall and see the big dinosaurs, but if you want to know more of the story about how they got there and the process involved in that, the best way to do it is, of course, to come see it being done, and, or better yet, do it yourself. It's been a good dig so far. So English Bob is one of my interns. So sometimes in the summer, I'll get interns. And so he has held up well. and. Uh, uh, as I say to a lot of my people that work for me and who prep fossils and things like that, hey, you don't suck. And that's, you know, that's high praise. And so that means they're doing a pretty good job. I haven't caught him crying and he hasn't run off. So those two things are pretty good indicators. Aiden Chang is my other intern. He's over here from uh, California and he is laser focused. So he actually wants to go into paleontology. This is his passion. Uh, this is not something he's just doing as a life experience sort of thing. And uh, so he's really into it. And yeah, he's worked out great.
There is irony in all of the good things in the Badlands. The name of this landscape betrays its beauty, and its beauty betrays its history. It is impossible to leave this place the same person you entered. There is a tragic poignancy that has amplified the closer you lower yourself to the footsteps of history. A magnetic connection between your heart, the earth, this place, and its humanity. It is powerful. The privilege of searching for these fossils in this place expresses itself in the awesome humility of finding your place between sensory and soul-rattling contrasts. You come to the Badlands to find fossils, but often you realize you're finding yourself and what's in our bones. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoy this content, then we'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing. Please stay safe, and as always, stay curious.